Good evening, everybody. My name is Trevor Aldenby. I am from Toronto, Canada. I am Long Now member number 378. And this is Are You Now or Will You Ever Be a Fossil? When I said that word, fossil, uh, each of you probably had a different treasure pop into your mind. Maybe it was Archaeopteryx, Lucy the Australopithecus, or this marvelous petrified tree. But the truth is, fossils are hiding a little bit of a superpower. You see, they're actually naturally occurring time machines. Like a gadget, they offer us a magical experience at a revolutionary price. A free window into the deep past and into the distant future. Just holding one in your hand can encourage you to more deeply consider our legacies as individuals and as a species. So, what is a fossil? Anyway, well, whether it's a brachiopod or a brachiosaurus, no real relation, fossils are the trace or bodily remains of plants and animals from the past that have been mineralized into rocks. This process can take millions of years, and as a young man, I was privileged enough to be able to explore the tail end of it in a landscape they don't often show Canadians in the U.S. travel brochures, the Badlands of Montana. In these badlands, as a scientific research assistant, I dug up 75 million-year-old dinosaur eggs like the one you see here, turning them from science objects into art objects by wrapping them in plaster of Paris for the CT scanners. And that summer, I really understood what it meant to see nature through multiple ways of knowing, scientific and artistic. That summer in the badlands gave me a new lens on life's evolution and on myself. They hit me right in the wonder zone. And if you were to look at the world for a while through fossil framed glasses like these, what you might notice is that our relationship to this static geological process is quite a bit more dynamic than it first seems. You see, just as we're influencing the Earth's atmosphere and biological systems, we're also influencing its geological flows and systems of record with our civilization. The odds of winding up a pristine Mona Lisa fossil like this Albertan ankylosaur are increasingly unlikely. And that's if we have anything big like an ankylosaur left to fossilize. You see, in order to become a fossil, you have to first go through most of the original Drake equation, the emergence of life on a rocky planet near a star. But then there are additional bonus filters for things like body composition, the speed of your burial, the time you've been left snug and undisturbed, and burial in the right acidic sediment, which given ocean acidification is getting harder to ensure. It used to be that taking a long walk off a short pier in cement shoes was the best way to get started with self-fossilization, but now we're not so sure. So as we become as gods, as Stuart Brand likes to say, influencing the natural cycles of fossilization, what would it be like to play... Medusa. The truth is, fossils have been a part of many human cultures for a very long time. In the Cree Canadian painter Kent Monkman's works, fossils are often a crucial part of the stories and songs that people share of the land. And in the works of other modern artists and architects, we see unique vision and inspiration for how fossilization might show up in our future or what bodies our descendants might be leaving behind. It isn't that hard to imagine us leaving a Cambrian explosion of waste fossils in our wake, forks and filaments fused into fractal patterns in the rock, like the trilobites that we're familiar with in stone. But for the early adopters among us, there is hope. Scientists and engineers are right now cracking the code on synthetic fossilization, turning a million-year process into a long weekend set on broil in the lab. And it's not hard for me to imagine, here with the Long Now crowd, that a member of tonight's audience might be the first contemporary human to be fossilized for science or for art. We've covered a lot of ground here in five minutes, but next time you hold a fossil in your hands or look at one in a museum, Remember to feel the wonder. They are nature's time machines, gateways into the art and science of the long now. Thank you.